Hello class. Today I will be discussing the material Kevlar. Many of you probably know this material from action movies or TV shows. Kevlar is most commonly known as the bulletproof material. This is most commonly seen in the form of Kevlar vests or helmets. As amazing as this material is in regarding to the safety of our troops and police force, Kevlar is also used in other ways many people would not think of. Throughout this video, I will be discussing different ways Kevlar is used, the makeup of Kevlar itself, and the overall benefits of Kevlar compared to using other materials. Before diving into Kevlar's functions, let us first discuss what Kevlar is. Kevlar, in its most basic form, is a synthetic fiber. Kevlar mostly tends to be seen as a fabric, a polyester almost. It was originally developed by Stephanie Kwalek while she was working at DuPont in 1965. She was able to create a fabric that was extremely heat resistant as well as just overall strong. Like steel, Kevlar has many different forms. In its most common form, Kevlar is a reaction between amine and acid chloride. This reaction is what causes Kevlar to be such a rigid material. This reaction also leads to Kevlar having an aramid ring around it and that is what causes Kevlar to have thermal stability. This also causes Kevlar to have a high number of hydrogen bonds. I know it has probably been a while since any of us have taken chemistry, but these bonds have a very strong attraction to pretty much any other atom because they want to create bonds so bad. This causes the hydrogen atoms to attach onto any other atom easily and securely. This is vital to making Kevlar such a strong material. Kevlar Webb described Kevlar's crystalline structure as a pack of uncooked spaghetti. When looking at a large section of Kevlar, it obviously does not have large visible gaps. Rather, it is more like a stack of papers pressed firmly together, with minute spaces between the atoms, as better shown in these pictures. A majority of the Kevlar imported into the United States is used in the tire manufacturing business. To many, the price does seem to be too expensive to consider the superlative traits that are brought along with the product. However, I feel like it is considerably cheaper in the long run. When looking at tires made with Kevlar, they are 30% lighter than original tires. They also eliminate the steel belt and bead wire. Unfortunately, many companies are not willing to bite the bullet and switch to Kevlar tires because they have a heftier upfront cost, even though in the long term the cost will drop due to the discontinuation of the steel belt and bead wire. By discontinuing the steel belt and bead wire, companies will save money through not having to run machines that make those products as well as not having to hire people to run those said machines. Now, let us look at the cost of Kevlar and evaluate if the benefits are worth the cost. If you were to order Kevlar 49, that's the most common form of Kevlar, from fiberglass.com, you can buy one yard for $54.95. Of course, like any other product, when you buy an item in larger bulk, you tend to get discounts. The same applies for this. Compared to other products, Kevlar is rather expensive. In many cases, however, the upfront cost of Kevlar may be more expensive, but in the long run, it becomes cheaper, like the tire example from earlier. Following is a picture of how Fiberglass advertises their Kevlar. Now, when we look at the tactical use of Kevlar, it is a rather hefty price to pay in order to use such a massive amount of Kevlar. Many would argue that cost analysis becomes more moral in this instance. How much is a human's life worth? I agree that looking at that side of the argument is important. However, I would also like to look at something that can be measured. War. War is easily one of the most expensive endeavors a country can indulge in. For the Iraq War alone, the United States spent around $2 trillion. Now that is an insane amount of money in my opinion. Now, I want you to imagine how much more it would have cost 
had our troops not been wrapped in Kevlar. And if we had had to replace soldiers by the thousands, I firmly believe that there is not a single person who can honestly say that the price of Kevlar is not worth the money during an already expensive war. The same can be said in regard to our police units. Police forces are faced with many dangerous situations, whether that is dealing with domestic disputes or in most recent occurrences, riots. These situations are dangerous regardless of political argument. Kevlar vest, helmets, gloves, etc. allow these men and women to remain safer when placed within these situations. I hope you have learned more about Kevlar from its chemical compound to the everyday uses it has from this. Now, hopefully you're able to consider using Kevlar in some of your future projects.